Hey guys, Jabby back. We're going back to Sentinel Prime. Let's go. My boys. Or not. Yeah, they're my boys. Or they're just being formal about it. Slayer. Well, thank you. Honor the priest. Oh, they got something going on here, don't they? I won't say I like it. But it does fill me with a small part portion of glee. I feel like they could have worked on the knockers a little bit more. Let's see here. A whole bunch of secrets around this place. Mostly codexes. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of reading this episode, aren't I? Sentinel Prime. Yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of reading this episode. Sorry, guys. The ancient arena is a holy place for the people of Argentineur. Constructed in the earliest days of their history, this coliseum serves as a proving ground for trial by combat. Historical records indicate that the Argenta did not jail their own kind. Rather, prisoners and criminals were granted the right to earn their chance at regaining honor through victory in the arena. Those who succeeded were given a place to fight in the front lines of the Sentinel Army to die in service of, to Argentineur. This traditional use of the arena has subsided since the assimilation with the Dark Realm. The corrupted priests now allow more violent exchanges with armed captives pitted against demons for sport. The priests of the Order Daig continue to hold undisputed power on Argent Denir. Spilling the blood of the Argent Ascended class will result in the transgressor's banishment. Asylum amongst the Argenta will be denied to any who do not adhere to the rules of engagement. Uh, I see what they're going to try and do. The arena is the holy place where the Argent people can't hurt each other. Well, that's too bad. As we... Oh, this is a nice little room. Don't really care too much about that. If he's hiding out here, we're just going to kill him good. Like that. Just outside the castle walls. He was badly wounded and wearing this. Looks familiar. Guts. Huge guts. Kill them. Must kill them all. Hmm. He has fight in him yet. In spite of his injuries. Send him to the arena. Let him be judged like the others. Oh, those priests look a lot less decrepified. Okay. None here? None to see here. History of the Sentinels, Part 4. View content. Translation from the Ligra Saltagenta, the Book of Kings. I haven't had to say that word in a while. In the time of King Novik, as the Argenta secured peace and safety through the dimensions across time and space, an outlander came to us. He was not of our world and spoke only ugly tongue. Now he f first took st or how he first took step on our land is one unknown. Sentinel scouts had found the outlander bloodied, clawed, and near death, mumbling of impending doom and the forces of darkness. The scent of blood followed him, and the gore that stained his armor seemed not entirely his own. By our gentle law, the stranger would be judged in the Colosseum, where he'd be 
given the chance of all who strayed from the path to fight for his freedom. We knew not of this stranger. His mind seemed crippled with rage. He dressed in attire not suited for our land and carried munition of arcane origin. We watched as his will overcame his injuries, and in the blood arena he proved his worth. The Outlander's technique was crude and brutal, but the determination of his in his charge echoed that of any trueborn sentinel. His war cry echoed through the Colosseum, as did the sound of his fury, and the guards cheered his banner. Rip and tear, they shouted, as the beast pushed beyond mortal wounds and certain death. He would be gifted no rank, no title. The survivors in the arena were proved only one reward. The right to earn an honorable death while spreading the blessings of the makers to those in need. The outlander's determination was witnessed. His ravings documented and through the world of Odadag, the con maker, had him brought before her. She set her minions to learning his tongue. For with his ugly words, he spoke of lands unseen, creatures born of fire, and a dark place unknown to the queen and her caste. Yet another opportunity to expand the gift of the makers to those in need. Yet, original Doom Guy armor there, mid belly and everything. Oh, look, a chair! That's a nice chair. Anything else in here? No, not really? Okay, I'm gonna just give it a once-over. Is that beer? I could use some arcane beer. I offer you a great power for one. A sign of truce. Right at your stomach. Yeah, I feel like that truce has some, uh... attachments that I'm not too fond of. History of the Sentinels, Part 5. Ugh, my throat. <laughs> Translation from the Ligra Saltaganta. <laughs> I always want to say Saltaganta. On the eve of the Black Star and the Dark Ones came from a world beneath our own, not through ship or ephemeral vessel, but through the fabric of dimensions. Out of swirling fiery gates came horned beasts from a timeless realm. First one, then many. Crashing waves of evil swelled from the obsidian forest of the Argentine overlands. The Alorum clans from the eastern mountains fell first to the black hordes of devils, and the city of Telorum was slung under the weight of their charge. We sentinels rose to meet the mighty beast, with spear in hand, the might of the holy fleet striking back at the demons. But the dark gates from whence they came gave birth to still even greater hordes. A line of blood was drawn with fallen on both sides. And the unholy wars began as the time of darkness came upon us. Yep. None in here? Just a big old thing? Oh, the bathing. The bathing area where you would clean yourself from your wounds. Sharpen your blade. Pick your blade. I know of what you have left behind. Go back to it then. Leave this crusade. You cannot save them. They have asked me for this, and so I give it to them. If you let the priest live, then I will return to you what the demons took from you so long ago. You My bunny? only turn back, and it will be yours again. All no. the pain you carry will be gone. You carry you promised me false buttercups. I will not stand for it. I was I was I had to check to see if that was an actual thing we could go in. Another codex entry. Huh. Wonder why we can. Oh, okay. Let's get this one first. Seems like they want to grab this one first. 
History of the Sentinels, Part 6. Translation from the Ligra Sotagenta. Unlike enemies of the past, we could not contain the demons emergent from the Dark Realm. Their weaponry was not conjured from machined steel, but from the very essence of their being. A dark magic not known to us in our many conquests. Minery. <laughs> many conquests. Had we grown overconfident, our victory serving to dull our blade as we drank from the glory of our expanding empire? Lost, we knew not of how to prevail against this foe. The Maker God stood perplexed, and our engineers and priests scrambled to find the advantage in battle we so desperately needed. Unknown to the enemy, we were pushed to the brink of defeat, and our God stood with us as we worked to find our answer. The Order of the Dag were the first to unlock the mystery of these foul creatures. The priests were able to capture several of the beasts and set about to identify the source of their power. It was then that the essence of the Dark Realm was discovered, not wholly unlike our own. This power was the life essence that flowed through their twisted form and powered their attacks. It could be harnessed to power our own weapons, giving the Argenta a chance to combat the demons on even footing. The priest believed that with greater knowledge of the essence, we could discover its source and cut it off from the demons who strangle their armies from within. Or to strangle their armies from within. Allowing us to regain the advantage we required for victory in the battlefield. The conmaker gave blessings to our majesty and directed the priest to delve deeper into the mysteries of the scarlet elixir from the demonic realm for she thought only to return balance to our universe. Proper assimilation was required, as hell stood beyond her influence. After great effort, the priests discovered more than they had ever hoped for. They learned of the true nature of the demonic energy, and how it could strengthen those skilled enough to harness its power. The energy coursing through the malformed bodies of our relentless enemy could be used to end life, or to enhance it. The power to heal, to mend, immortality, knowledge and enlightened faculties beyond our understanding. With the demon's life force in the skilled hands of the sentinel priest and under the righteous gaze of the con maker, our people would not only rise to victory over the unholy horde that clawed at our walls, we would move to a higher plateau of existence, ushering in a new era of military science and industrial healing. No sentinel would grow sick. No maker would need suffer the transfiguration that they so feared. All would be risen. None could ever propose our peaceful ways and threaten our world again. True balance over hell and its legions over space and time. In this world and all others, we could dictate the order. Or we would dictate the order. United with the makers, we would fight peace eternal. Heh. <laughs> Using an imp to do the Galileo man. That's an odd to, like, that's an odd way to situate a heart, but eh, whatever. Kidneys are rather high up as well. Maybe they need that to make use for the, uh... I'm gonna get away from that because there was something there that would that could be taken as against TOS. Why would I go up the easy way when I could go up the cool way? Yeah. Bonus points. The correct way. And the. F huh. Okay, well, let's get this first. History of the Sentinels, Part 7. Hopefully it's not a long one again. It's a long one again! Uh... Okay, well, here we go. Translation from the Liga of Sotagenta, Book of Kings. The Conmaker demanded a tithe of the essence, 
and driven by her desire, the priests submitted themselves to her will. The order of the Daeg took counsel with the king, speaking only of the spoiled land sure to be found through this cleft in creation, and the opportunity to purge the new invaders from Argent de Nur. We took the war to their cursed land, pressing through the gates of wizardry. Wizardry! There was among, one among us who seemed to know the true nature of these foul demons. It was the Outlander, the stranger who had come to us from places unknown. He who had survived in the front lines far longer than any sentinel-born prisoner had before. His passion for battle against the vile horde was evident, his lust for the destruction matching our own. Though Argentino remained a foreign land to him, his fervor caught the attention of the inquisitors of the sentinel guard. Some whispering of suspect, suspected alignment. I was trying to form the word allegiance and alliance at the same time, and I got allegiance. <laughs> anyway, suspected allegiance he held in secret with the demons. Silencing the critics, King Novik deemed him worthy of selection. The signifiers brought a commission to our king, and it was decided that he be lifted from the common rabble. Though no arena-born prisoner had ever been granted the honor, the Night Sentinels broke tradition and deemed the Outlander worthy of training. A number of disciples grumbled and chafed at the barbarian presence in their ranks, but in the war with the demons, all opportunities for even the slightest advantage were to be considered. And as they witnessed the stranger spar in their hellmasters, masters, they found him in an undying, unrelenting compatriot. This man was an outlander, outsider, friend to none, and yet rose each time he was thrown to the dirt of the circle. Battered and bruised, his brow stained with blood, he rose with grim determination for the chance to face his enemies in armed combat once again. Time passed as the stranger was instructed in the codified matrices of their order. The ancient lessons of battle and brotherhood taught to all sentinels. He could sense the opportunity before him. Soon, all of hell would feel his wrath once again. Satisfied that he would not be a detriment to their prowess, the Night Sentinels granted him his wish as they ventured through the hell gates with the stranger in tow. They knew no rest. Fighting in the unnatural elements and training under the blood moon of night. The stranger suffered exhaustion, wounds, and sickness, but asked for no aid, and he was offered none. Mmm, rough time. Three times the night sentinels ventured into the gate and back, and upon every return the stranger strode more capable than before. His gait locked in step with the march of the sentinels, a disciplined and now controlled lust for demon blood ever present. The passing of years and numerous battles with the devils indentured the stranger to Argentus' mightiest warriors, and no longer did they condescend him to be as new-blooded conscript, for to them he had become a warrior <laughs> and a brother in arms forged in war, an ally and a weapon. Ye yeah, sword! Oh hey, it's the guy with the hammer! In the background. Nice. Thank you for the extra life. I will greatly enjoy it. Auto map. My beloved. I pity the humans. I do. This is a hard role to play. But I too have a world to save. Without their souls, there can be no hell energy, and the Argent will cease to flow. I cannot allow this to happen. You will not stand in the way of Erdak's progress. This is how it has always been done. It is not for you to deny us our chance of prosperity. By denying others theirs? Hypocrite. Give me this. Okay. 
Uh, thing up there, thing up there, priest there, hell priest! <laughs> ah, but there's so much to do. Hmm. I think the blood crunch is saying that it's ready. Just so much to venture through. Please be short. Please be short. Translatively short. Translation from the Ligra Saltagenta, Book of Kings. As we warred with the beast of the Agenta, society grew. Under the watchful eye of the makers and through the endless power of the essence. While our generals were consumed with the unholy war, our culture was marked by the beautiful potion the enemy had provided us, the sweet elixir. It brought us immeasurable capacity and empowered us to reach farther into dimensions once thought to be beyond our grasp. Under the direction of our maker gods and the engineering of our high priests, our weapons blazed and our war machines stormed. The throngs of the populace drank deeply from the well of energy unveiled by the priest. But we of the night sentinels took no part in their abundance. Some among us whipser, <laughs> whispered accusations and warnings against this manner of progress. But they were quelled. As it was not our role to dictate the future of our people, only to defend it. Yeah, I mean, that's how an uh, army goes, right? I also think that's probably going to be here for us today. We'll grab those two things and continue on and see what happens when we kill the last, last hell priest tomorrow. Or today. Depending on when you're looking at it. Till then, guys, this is going to be Jabby signing out. Y'all have a good one.